Robin, I think last time um, we, we, we ended up um, discussing uh, monotheism and um, paganism and a number of those concepts, spirituality versus religion and so on. And, you know, we are presented at the present time in our history that, you know, we have three uh, monotheistic uh, religions that are supposed to be the more or less absolute truth relative to God, um, um, our divine origin, uh, if you will. And, you know, that everything else is is, is primitive, uh, is, is, is pagan, um, it, it's fetish, and a, a number of other derogative uh, terms. But yet still, I think we can probably trace um, these monotheistic, so-called so monotheistic religions, back to their, their origin um, uh, in Kemet. Uh, I think one of the things that we may we do uh, um, is to ask you as a historian, can you place um, the, 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 the Jewish people or the Israelites or the Hebrews, uh, or is there a difference between these three? Can you place them in, in Egypt? And what period of time would that be in terms of their arrival, in terms of their um, stay there, and then in terms of their exodus. <laughs> can can you help us there? Because it seems to be a bit of a quagmire. Here's the problem. <laughs> um, I tried writing uh, a history of Judaism. Mm. Um, and here's the problem. Every single fact that you could possibly imagine is controversial. <laughs> and when it comes to trying to use the Tanakh, their holy scrolls, as a way of tracing them, every fact is controversial. There isn't a fact that we can say, yes, this is what happened. So the stories begin with um, Abraham in the city of Ur, and Ur is in Sumer. Now, the Sumerians are the people of ancient Iraq, where Iraq is today. They're not Arabs. They were originally black folks. Mm. Does that mean that Abraham was one of them? We don't know. Mm. Did Abraham even exist? Mm. We don't know. Then we have the story that Abraham's people went west from Sumer to Canaan. And in the land of Canaan, Canaan is where Israel stroke Palestine stroke Lebanon is today. In that land, um, they mixed with the um, Hittites and some other populations. The Hittites are thought to be white. Is that what happened? And then from there, they are said to have entered Egypt. Ancient Egypt during this period was definitely black African. Uh, did that happen? Um, all of these things are controversial. And in Egypt, their numbers allegedly went from 70 people up to 430,000 men, not including priests. We have no figure for the number of women. We have no figure for the number of children. Uh, Professor Finch says that's 2 million people. And if 70 people enter a country and 2 million leave, those 2 million would have been black Africans, surely. Mm -hmm. But did that happen? Mm -hmm. And all of these facts are controversial. So there is the only hard evidence that I consider to be hard evidence is one of the ancient Jewish temples has been found by archeologists. And what was found was on Elephantine Island, and Elephantine Island is the, is the boundary between ancient Egypt and ancient Nubia. Mm. And that means that whoever built the temple on Elephantine Island, they would have been black Africans. And that's the only solid evidence that I think would definitely stand up in court if we wanted to trace the ancient people that call themselves Israelites or Jews or Hebrews or whatever. Greetings. My name is Robin Walker. I'm also known as the Black History Man. I am perhaps best known for my 2006 book, When We Ruled. Based on this book, 
I'm launching a new online history course aimed at you, the adults. You could be a parent, you could be a teacher, a mechanic, cleaner, professionals, care workers, security guards, taxi drivers, kitchen workers, entrepreneurs, tech heads, lawyers, all of you. We want people from all over the world to be empowered by our content. We want you to gain mastery over your history and heritage. And you can do this by subscribing to our course. Click on the link to get this powerful, life-changing material. Now, now, um, now, how do you know that that temple is a Jewish temple in, on Elephant Island? Oh, the archaeologists say so. So it's not me saying this. <laughs> this isn't me. The archaeological report came out, I think, in 1911. Mm. And it was reported on by a scholar called the Reverend A.H. Sace, mm -hmm. S-A-Y-C-E. Um, and what's more is the temple, there's certainly, uh, it's called the Temple of Yahoo. Yahoo mm -hmm. is to be the same as Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's built using the same technology as the Egyptian uh, temple of, I think it's Kanum, which is next door to it. And therefore, it was indigenous Africans that built both. Um, so the Reverend A. H. Sace. And it's really, really interesting because so few black scholars seem to know about the Temple of Yahoo on Elephantine Island. And I think that that is very, very strong evidence that everyone should be talking about, in my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're talking about it because I didn't know about it. You know, what, what I knew about, um, uh, I think it's Elephantine Island or, or, or further um, yeah. shall I say south into Ethiopia, is, is, is that the, um, the, 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 the what, what, what was it called? Um, uh, um, oh my goodness! That that, that Solomon's um, um, son, with Sheba, Menelik. Uh, uh, yeah, but, and and he 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 took the um. I think he took it to Elephantine Island, didn't he? The the um, well, what is it they used to worship, and and they would carry it um. Yeah, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. There you go. Thank you. You know, the old brain here um, uh, isn't what it used to be. Yeah, the, uh, he he took the, the Ark of the Covenant and then uh, uh, took it to, of course, Ethiopia. And um, and there's some weird there where there's this um, and and uh, who, who was the author that was looking for this and he followed the trail through Elephantine Island and. It supposedly um, in, it ended up in Ethiopia, and I've actually visited the place where it is, the, 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 where it's housed in Ethiopia, although they won't let you in, obviously, because it's sacred and it's guarded by an Ethiopian priest, you know, with his life. He stays there all his life and so on and so forth. So that would give uh, credence, um, I, I, I would say, to, to that particular uh, a story. Um, uh, you know, and then following up on that would be the so-called Falasha Jews, um, whose practice, I, I think, is really um, ancient Judaism, as, as far as, I don't know, I think the current rabbis say, um, and it predates, shall we say, the Jerusalem type of worship, um, um, and, and therefore is original. And, and many of those um, uh, Jews, as you know, have been transported to Israel and so on and so forth. And that's how they're treated in Israel, maybe another story uh, for another time. But the fact is that they exist um, um, uh, in, in Ethiopia. And I'm sure there's still uh, some there. Not all of them have been uh, uh, airlifted to, to Israel. But that gives credence to, to, to um, that, that whole business of shall we say, Hebrews or, or um, authentic African Hebrew people uh, before there was what the exodus, whatever that was, and, and if the exodus itself, you know, really, really happened. Because again, um, well, I just want to mention one thing that I seem to recall 
that when Akhenaten came to the throne and he was the heretic pharaoh, um, um, he, he brought in, um, some people say he brought in monotheism, but he didn't really bring in monotheism. He brought in Atenism, which was the worship of the sun as an entity. So, so this was a reversion from a spiritual god to a, to, to a god who was a thing. And, a, and from my perspective, and I think also from the original Kemetic perspective, um, um, uh, you know, he, he, he was a, a renegade in, in that sense. But he attempted to destroy the temples of Amun. And many of the priests um, went to Ethiopia, as I recall, historical. If, was that a historical fact? It's possible. It's possible. Okay. But let me throw, let me throw in a couple. Yeah. Uh, I have come across some Israeli news articles. Mm -hmm. And there's an Israeli newspaper called Jewish World. And they have an article called Ethiopian Judaism, nearly identical to that practiced during Second Temple period. And I have another uh, Israeli paper called BreakingIsraelNews.com. Mm -hmm. And it's the same headline, Ethiopian Judaism, nearly identical to Second Temple practice. And so the oldest form of Judaism practiced in the modern world is mm -hmm. the Ethiopian Jewish practice. Mm -hmm. And similarly, you mentioned um, a scholar tracing the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. There was a TV documentary by a London scholar called Tudor Parfit. And he uh, prized the theory of Ethiopia, but he, he, he also explores other theories that the Ark of the Covenant, if it ever existed, could have mm -hmm. ended up in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. And the result of his research is that some of the black peoples of Southern Africa, such as the Lemba, wow. uh, have been found to have a certain um, genetic uh, 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 traits. And these genetic traits are, are said to connect the Lemba to other Jews around the world. Mm -hmm. And there's this story going around that geneticists are using that you can trace uh, certainly elite Jews uh, to a particular set of genetic markers. And the Lemba have a higher proportion of that genetic marker mm -hmm. than European Jews. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's an interesting uh, area of research. Again, no black scholars are doing this research. This is what Judah Parfit and his people Mm -hmm. are, are coming. As a thank you for visiting our website, we are giving you a free copy of our exclusive 100 Black History Facts, which is in fact a taster of our course content. Make sure you leave your email address and we will send it right to you. We hope it inspires you to dig deeper into your history and heritage. Yeah, I, I, I think I've, I've also heard of that one. I think it, it's related to the Cohen's or the Levites or something that was the priestly class in terms of the um, the, the ancient uh, Hebrew people. So there, there are definitely significant connections there, and we probably won't go go further into it. But after, maybe not this time. But we we will stick a pin in it and get back to it later on as, as we go into African religions. But certainly we we also know that the Yoruba or at least some people um, think that the Yoruba uh, trace their origins um, um, to, to Kemet and, and many of their rituals, shall we say, are, are considered to be similar to the Jewish rituals, to Jewish rituals. So, you know, there, there's that connection, um, not just to Southern Africa, but to Western Africa, as well as obviously North, Northeast Africa. But um, that 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 seems to um, be in the background in in some sense as everything um, became Euro Europeanized. But you know another thing that's also um, very significant in in terms of whether or not there's an impact to Abraham and and so on. And and there's a lot of evidence that that suggests that it's not fact. 
but but all of this um, uh, greatness of King David and 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 Solomon, um, in in terms of their 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 building and the, the, the temples that they had in Jerusalem, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, in ancient Israel, there's been no archaeological evidence of any of that. Now um, you know so, supposedly Solomon was was so rich and he had um, I, I don't know a thousand concubines and you know, some other wives and so on, other than, than, than Sheba. Um, but, but there's no evidence. I mean, there's no artwork, there are no goblets, there are no artifacts to be found anywhere. There are no building sites anywhere. And I, can I, jump in my conclusion, I, I just want to say my conclusion from that is that there's, there's a borrowing of Egyptian history, <laughs> that, that, that these folks who at some time were in Egypt learned everything from Egypt, just like Moses did. I mean, we're going to get back to Moses, uh, I'm sure. And, and then took it as their, their, own, their own history, history because they were in Egypt for a certain period of time. Um, you know, and, and to me, that makes a, a lot of sense in, in terms of trying to um, uh, uh, put together, you know, this biblical stuff, uh, which, which, again, a, a lot of it is myth. Uh, but the cursing, the, the period that they lived in Egypt, the cursing of Egypt, but yet still the appropriation of, of all of this wonderful uh, um, 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 mythos that is clearly uh, uh, Egyptian. I'm sorry I, I ran off there at the mouth, but go ahead and, 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 and say your speech. Yeah, what I was going to say was, again, just to strengthen your point, mm -hmm. um, I came across a 2002 article called As Rabbis Face Facts, Bible Tales Are Wilting. <laughs> so you've now got in America the United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism mm -hmm. issuing uh, a new commentary on the Tanakh, which they're calling uh, Etz Hayim, the Tree of Life, where they are more or less saying uh, let me read it. Abraham, the Jewish patriarch, probably never existed, nor did Moses. The mm -hmm. entire Exodus stories recounted in the Bible probably never occurred. The same is true of the tumbling of the walls of Jericho. So they're going, essentially knocking all of that stuff down. Mm -hmm. And that raises the question, if a lot of this stuff uh, isn't historically substantiated, mm -hmm. then what really is in the Tanakh? And is it possible that a lot of the material really was lifted from other sources mm -hmm. and were those other sources the ancient Egyptians and for that matter the Sumerians mm -hmm. and there is some evidence that there is and we have to shout out the late professor Yusef Ben Yochanan mm -hmm. who pointed out that Proverbs 22 mm -hmm. the uh, uh, Tanakh is really a rewrite of a book called The Instructions of Amen and mm -hmm. And it appears to be word for word, passage mm -hmm. for passage for passage. And that's not the only example where stuff just got lifted wholesale. Mm -hmm. They didn't even change it up particularly much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, similarly, I, yeah, go ahead. And similarly, people have noticed that um, uh, Psalms 104, attributed to King David, appears to be word for word. The hymn to uh, Aten, written by Pharaoh Akhenaten. If it wasn't written by him, it was written during the time of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Uh, again, word for word. Mm -hmm. And so people then raise some questions. Um, you know, how many more stories mm -hmm. in the of Tanakh really are stories that people just lifted mm -hmm. and dumped into the, the the Tanakh scrolls. I think I think if you if you look at Genesis too, I mean Genesis is really simply um, um a takeoff, shall we say, on what was taught at, at Hermopolis uh, in, mm -hmm. in in terms of the primeval new the the, the, the waters well, uh, yeah. out of which ev everything came. You know, and then God saying, let there be light. I mean, light is obviously raw or atum raw, you, you mm -hmm. know, out of this, you know, then then came, all, you know, all, all, all creation. And yeah. uh, so so that, that uh, there's 
a lot of evidence, as you're saying, um, or I should say there's lack of evidence. There's evidence that there's lack of evidence of, of yeah. the historical validity of, of most of what is, it is, is written in terms of the, 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 the Old Testament as historical fact um, uh, coming down, you know, from Abraham um, to all of this, the glory of, of, of the Israelites, uh, et cetera. And it, it seems to me a, a, a lot of it has to do um, and we, I guess we, we will see that as as, as we look at, at Christianity, with with the the change, shall we say, from the understanding of myth as a way of expressing reality that cannot be expressed in words, and and going to uh, uh, um, uh, an anthropomorphic um, 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 misunderstanding of myth. And, and treating it as historical reality, as opposed to a myth that's trying to tell you something else in terms of, of symbolism. And, and I think you see that wholesale, I, I, I think, in terms of what we're discussing here, because you can't find archaeological evidence, um, you, you know, for, for any of this stuff that, that, that's, that's um, supposedly ancient Jewish history, going all the way back to Abraham. Um, if, you can't find that. And, and, and up to the, the, the glorification of, of Israel in its golden age. There's just no, no evidence for that. And then so many of the other stories are preposterous, like you mentioned the exodus of what, two million people or something like that. But there's no record of it anywhere historically. And yeah. um, we get to the same thing. <laughs> what, where's the historical record of, of Jesus? I mean, you know, a man who was supposed to have or well, man or divinity was supposed to have come among us and perform miracles all over the place. And yet still there's no historical record. Nobody at the time, you know, of, of, of um, when, you know, BC and, and AC uh, happened, um, no, nobody has a historical record of him. So I think we have the same thing um, uh, happening that, that it's myth. And then you have a group of people, I don't know why, and, and maybe, Maybe you 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 can enlighten us there. Why certain people misunderstood the ancient teachings? Uh, was it just that they, they were ignorant and they came up on it, and then took took it for for truth as, as because they did not have the instruction which would have given them the understanding of what the myth really represented. They didn't that, that, have the wise they, they, they killed the, they killed the wise man. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let me jump in. Okay. Um, one of the mistakes I think that we, um, our black people, make mm -hmm. is we underestimate the cleverness of Judaism. And let mm -hmm. me explain what I mean by that. Judaism, okay, the historical facts are there, mm -hmm. but the political program that the historical facts have is there <laughs> you see judaism as a religion is a self-help nationalistic religion enabling people to survive presumably in the middle east mm -hmm. against their enemies by providing a code that if you follow the code you are able to successfully fight and battle your enemies and that's really what it's about. It's not, you see, a lot of us will look at it and we'll say, compared to what the ancient Egyptians taught, it's a naive misunderstanding. Mm. And on a spiritual level, it may well be. But from a political level, you have essentially one of the most powerful self-help group identity building are programs that have ever been put together because ultimately if you follow the ideas within it you can't eat from somebody else's table because that's not allowed consequently you can never be poisoned by somebody else you have a a, a code of hygiene which is strict it's harsh but if you follow it you live longer than if you didn't follow it. Do you see? You have a, uh, you know, every time it says, and God said, 
-hmm. Yeah, that's considered to be a mitzvah, a commandment. If you follow those commandments, you have license to fight your enemies. You have license to fight your enemies to the death. And that fighting your enemies to the death means that you can survive in a hostile environment. And ultimately, this is why Judaism is still around today as a religion, despite the fact they copied a whole bunch of stuff from other people's religions. Do you see? So from the perspective of what's true and what's false, we can certainly find that there's a lot of holes in the history of how they present their thing. But the political program of being able to stand up to uh, what they would consider to be their enemies and ultimately survive, ultimately thrive, and ultimately grow, um, that's Judaism 101.